our worship is about to begin, so let us quiet our hearts to receive our worship. church, 
our community, our resources, our time, our lives, all to be for you. Everything ours is yours, and we come together to declare this to be so on this Sunday before Thanksgiving. Bless our time together with your holy presence, and bless each of us here, that we may truly become blessings to others. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning. Please take your hymnals and turn to 185. Good morning, Gilds the Skies. Uh, we'll sing all four verses of this wonderful old hymn, When Morning Gilds the Skies, so let's stand and sing together.
Apostle Paul, when he wrote letters to the church, in the beginning of almost every one, he said, I thank my God for you. As we greet one another, let us say, I thank God for you. church is not a steeple. The, the church is the people, right? And it is. The church is the community of faith. And I like to say the family of faith. That's who we are. And that's who we are for each other. And how much we need the family of faith. How much we need to be the church to each other and for each other. And so when we think about our prayers today, think about how that we are called to be the church, wherever we are, to be the family, and to be the brothers and sisters to one another and to those that feel outside of the family, what's in their heart and how much they need us. And we need to be about serving them as well. There's this sense of mutuality. There's this sense of what it means to be community one to another. We're connected for a reason. Let's remember these that we have on our list. Anna and Angelo, Angelopoulos, are the parents of Henry. And so we certainly want to remember them. We also want to remember these that are on our list. Brittany, Joyce, Paul, Barbara. Marilyn and Amelia. Does it go without saying, too, that maybe we ought to remember those that are traveling, and those that are gathering families together, that we remember uh, that we still, uh, families by, uh, they gather around the table, that they... Uh, know that it's better to get together as family than maybe getting together in politics or in other ways. But let us get together as family and express our love to each other, no matter what might divide us or maybe what might uh, differing opinions. We can still love one another. Let us pray. With thankful hearts, O oh God, we come to worship you. And whether at home or gathered here, we thank you for the wonderful gift of Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes and shows us a way of life, who comes to offer us the way of life, who comes to seek all your children when he says, come and follow me. For it is in this sense of togetherness and following together and journeying the Christian faith together that we understand what it means to be a disciple. Nothing that we can do by ourselves is not nearly as important as what we can do together. Lord, so bind our hearts together. Show us how to bring together the ties that bind hearts and Christian love. 
Show us again and again how we can find the common among ourselves and how that we both are in need of you and need of each other. Hear our prayer, O oh God, as we pray for the needs of the world. May we be about sharing and caring, not just within our head, but with our hands and our feet in the places that we go. Open up our hearts, O oh God, and let us be people ministering with others. And that people to people and person to person, we find your kingdom growing on earth as it is in heaven. That we find ourselves growing because of our time spent with others. Lord, may your spirit fall upon each one of us this day. And that with grateful hearts, we find our true contentment in you and in your church. A place to share, a place to care, a place to serve as your people. Hear us as we pray for those in need, in their loneliness, in their lostness, and in their sickness and illness, and in their grief. May you tie our hearts together again, O oh God, with the tie that binds, that is Christian love, that we have for you and for each other. So hear our prayers. We pray in Jesus' name that taught us to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
The children come forward for children's time. I'm glad you're here. I think that also speaks to uh, the topic today of what they have accomplished. But I want you to think about something. You had children, our nieces and nephews, when they were small, the things that you tried to teach them most often had to do with community. Of all the things that we try to teach children, it's how that they interact with one another, right? Now share your toys, be kind to one another, help, help someone in, in need. And so we have this idea that really what we teach children is, is how to live in community. And it's not easy. Now I'm thinking about uh, the hand, hand chimes. <laughs> I know y'all get to try to get along, you know, as, uh, you know. But when you're playing, uh, you, you've got to get along, right? And the more that you have, I tell you, the more I'm impressed. Because if there were just two of you up there, it, it's only four hands, right? And then when you have that many up there and all those different hands working, that's impressive. That's impressive when y'all can do that and stay together. Now, I, I know that uh, from y'all's ears, I, you know, I, it sounded great to me. But y'all, I heard afterwards say, well, you know, we might have missed no here or there. We were pretty good today. Yeah. Pretty good today. <laughs> pretty good today. You know, isn't that what the church says sometimes? We were pretty good today. <laughs> oh. Testing. Okay. All right, I'll turn around this way. <laughs> I wonder what it's like if we were all, you know, work together that way and found out that, you know, when we're in rhythm, when we're connected, when we're doing this together, it, it, it shows when we're in harmony with one another. Thank you for the sermon. <laughs> Blessed be the tie that binds our hearts in Christian love. The song I've heard for a long, long time. On Sunday evenings, it was the last song that was sung every time in some of the churches I served. Let's sing that, that song out of Coke Spirit. When we think about what we try to teach children and what we try to learn from each other, is it not how to live in community? How do we share and care and love and live with one another? To me, that means being the church. To me, that means being a child of God. Let us pray. Oh God, as we have lived our days as your children, help us to always see the basics of what you try to teach us is how do we live with one another in Christian love. For that is truly the tie that binds. It is truly what keeps our hearts together. It is your love being shared in each and every one of us. May it be so, today and every day. Amen. Our hymn of preparation is in the Faith We Sing. That's the little book underneath the pew in front of you. And it is number 2036, 2036. Give thanks. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Let's stand and sing here.
I laugh sometimes because I think about some of the things that I think about doing on Sunday mornings with you all and that I don't do. So I'll tell you one that I was thinking about doing and uh, decided not to, probably because for me, more so. I, so I wanted to go around and uh, not have my shoes tied. You know what happens when some, you know, we see people that they didn't tie their shoe that morning or whatever. We tell them, hey, your shoe's untied. Well, I didn't want to trip and fall. And, of course, that's what you would be telling me, that, you know, my shoes are untied. Stephen, we don't want you to trip and fall. Well, I didn't want to trip and fall, so I decided not to do it. But you would have probably told me. And I was wondering, you know, how many people would tell me, you know, Stephen, your shoe's untied. Stephen, your shoe's untied. And I would go around walking. Um, and doing that. I, I think uh, all of y'all had your shoes tied this morning. I, I didn't notice anybody with their shoes untied. Uh, but really, that, that's pretty important, is it not? I mean, that's one of the, probably the first accomplishments, right, that, that children could be so proud of. I learned to tie my shoes. I've learned to tie my shoes. And uh, I remember my grandparents at times would... Uh, uh, Stephen, can you tie my shoes? And I was always, you know, at, well, you, haven't you learned to tie your shoes? And uh, it was uh, that and many other things that dawned on me later that uh, they just wanted me to spend time with them. I saw one of those memes that said that uh, children, uh, or parents don't want children's tears at their funerals. They want their love and their hugs when they're alive. And isn't that true? Because family is so important. Being together, Christian community is so important. There's probably a scripture, this is one of them, that I will preach on over and over and over again. It reminds me of um, uh, a sermon that, uh, or a joke that was told to me early on that this new preacher came to town and he preached this sermon. And they thought it was, okay, you know, it was pretty good. And they said, preacher, we're glad you're here. And, you know, thank you for that sermon today. Well, the preacher decided that uh, the very next Sunday he'd preach that sermon again. And, uh, preacher, that's, that's a good sermon. Uh, you know, we're glad you're here. Preacher did it for a third week and then a fourth week. Preacher, we don't know if we want you to uh, stay here with us because uh, you keep preaching the same sermon. Preacher replies, well, when you get it right, I'll move on. <laughs> it's kind of like, you know, we, to be in community, it's always the struggle to get it right. And like the Kathy, Jackie said today, is that, you know, sometimes we're good. Sometimes we're not so good. But nonetheless, we are always called to get it right. The scripture today is one of those scriptures that I read over and over and over again so that I can try to get it right. From Colossians chapter 3, beginning with verse 1. So if you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on the things that are above, not on the things that are on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, is revealed, then you also will be revealed with him in glory. Put to death, therefore, whatever in you is earthly, fornication, impurity, passion, evil, desire, and greed, which is idolatry, on account of these, the wrath of God is coming on those who are disobedient. These are the things you also once followed when you were living that life. But now you must get rid of all such things, anger, wrath, malice, slander, and abusive language from your mouth. Do not lie to one another, seeing that you have stripped off the old self with its practices and have clothed yourself with the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge according to the image of its creator. 
In that renewal, there is no longer Greek or Jew, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave and free, but Christ is in all and is all and in all. And then this portion of scripture that I read most often, beginning with verse 12. As God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Bear with one another. And if anyone has a complaint against another, forgive each other, just as the Lord has forgiven you. So you also must forgive. Above all, clothe yourself with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in one body, and be thankful. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. We all have this yearning, this longing to be fulfilled. You and I will search in many ways to fulfill this yearning within our hearts. More than anything, I believe we seek contentment. St. Augustine was right about all of humanity when he prayed, our hearts are restless until we find our rest in thee. Found something that was written. It said, to feel less alone is without a doubt an ultimate quest of all of life. Yet perhaps never before has loneliness been so widespread as it is today. 1988. Can apply to this day as well, could it not? There's an old story about the rabbinic tradition, and it goes like this. For a whole year, this one novice felt that they was longing to go to the master rabbi to talk with him. But every time I entered the house, I felt I wasn't man enough, though. But one day I was walking across the field and weeping and that I knew I must run to the rabbi without delay. The master rabbi said, why are you weeping? I answered, I am, after all, alive in this world, a being created with all the sense and all of limbs, but I do not know what it is that I was created for and what I am good for in this world. The master rabbi replied, Little fool, that's the same question I've carried around with me all my life. You come and eat with the evening meal with me today. Isn't that how sometimes we feel with our yearnings, our longings, is we're the only ones that have it. And yet it is something that connects all of us. Our longings, our yearnings, our restlessness, our loneliness are all fulfilled the same way in community. Ignatius of the Antioch advised first century Christians that we cultivate the way of life by seeking out the community of saints, those seeking to live the same way of life as Jesus. Granted, you and I all need our solitude with God, but does not God move us back into community with God's people? We need community. St. Basil criticized the solitary life by lifting up the law of love when he said, Whose feet wilt thou then wash? Referring to doing what Jesus did with his followers, his disciples, and washing their feet. St. Augustine saw the story of the raising of Lazarus as a parable for us today about how that we are to live in community with one another. The story about Lazarus is found in Luke 11. Lazarus is ill, and he's the brother of Mary and Martha. And they sent a message to Jesus that Lazarus was sick. 
However, Jesus did not immediately go. He lingered another two more days before going to their home. While Jesus was on the way, he was told that Lazarus had died. In fact, by the time that Jesus had arrived, Lazarus had been in the tomb already for four days. Jesus tells Martha in her doubting, I am the resurrection and the life. Jesus calls Lazarus to come out. But here's the part of the story that St. Augustine wanted Christians to heed. After Jesus comes out of the tomb wrapped in burial cloth, Jesus says to those watching, unbind him and let him go. You see, for us living together in life and in death, we experience the power and purpose of Christian community. Do you know the story of Bill Wilson and Dr. Bob Smith? Bill Wilson was an alcoholic. He knew it, and everyone else knew it. As a Christian, though, once he became sober, he wanted to seek other men out who were struggling with alcohol themselves, but no one was interested in his help. After a business deal fell through on one of his business trips, this time in Akron, Ohio, Bill was tempted to go to the bar. For five months, he'd been sober. And he said to himself, as he had said so many times, mulling in his head, I need a drink. But then out of nowhere came another urge. I don't need a drink. I need another alcoholic. Bill Wilson left the bar and headed toward a telephone booth to make a series of calls that led him the next day to visit with Dr. Robert Smith. These two men would be the co-founders of Alcoholic Anonymous. 20 years later, Bill reflected on that night at the bar meeting Dr. Smith. Our conversation was completely a mutual thing. I knew that I needed this alcoholic as much as he needed me. In psychology, the idea of mutuality is this awareness that life's most precious realities, love and wisdom and healing, are all attained in this understanding of mutuality. For me, I understand that life's most precious realities, love and wisdom, healing, sobriety, forgiveness, are attained only in community. Yes, our need for community arises within very flawed and imperfect people. We need others to help us at the same time we need others in order to help them. <coughs> and where do we find this contentment? Where do we find thankfulness? Where do we find this idea of community? The actual practice of living together within community of others is where we seek contentment and find it. Community is created when people seek the same thing. Christian community arises out of the discovery that we're all looking for the same thing in trying to follow Jesus. However, community forms best when the novice and the experienced together seek Humility and a willingness to share the journey with each other. It's not like all the novices need to stay together or all the experienced people need to huddle in their own little room. It's this wonderful way in which we all together find ourselves in need of each other. There was one day a would-be disciple who approached Jesus and said, teach me what it means to receive eternal life. And Jesus said, come and follow me. And the rich man walked away, not still yet understanding that it is in community that we find eternal life. Sometimes the novice might say, no, just tell me. No, just give me the answer. But some things we realize that in life cannot be told 
They must be experienced within community. Contentment, like many other yearnings of the faith, are found only in the company of saints. It's where one person said that we are all beggars in this world. In this place, we are all beggars too. We've just discovered where the bread is. Bill Wilson would reflect years later about the significance of the AA community. He said, your attempts to become sober will be as useless as any other if you soak it up like a sponge and just keep it to yourself. Have you ever heard someone say, I'm done with organized religion? I'm done. I'm finished. I'm tired of the church. But haven't you also heard some people say, I just don't know how people make it through life and life struggles without the church. People at both polar ends about trying to find contentment, trying to find what they need most in life. Have you ever done a word study on the word religion? Religion in itself is yearning, that deep yearning within us to move toward wholeness, to completeness, to see our lives fulfilled, content, and thankful. The word religion, if you write it down, it's comprised of two parts. The first part is RE, and we know that is something that we need to do again or repeat. We need to do it again and again, and religion has that RE in it. And the last part, Ligon, is a little more harder to discern, but it's there. The word ligament, the word liaison, and the meaning of coming together or actually tying together. Therefore, the idea of religion or organized religion or what it means to the Christian faith begins with the realization that you and I are untied or that we have loose ends in our relationship with God and with each other. And that really the, the word meaning itself, religion, is the work of retying together our relationships. Religion is discovering the tie that binds our hearts, our lives together. Is that why we join hands when families pray? When we form that circle of love around the table, holding each other's hands in love. Even when we squeeze the hand as a sign of love that holds on and doesn't let go. When we're at our best, isn't that what we do? When I was an elementary school boy, I love the time I got to spend with my old Aunt Bert. And she was old. I thought she was about for an elementary boy. She always asked me to help her get out of the car. And then she wanted me to help her walk wherever we were going. As a boy, it never dawned on me. Aunt Bert never needed my help. She needed me to show her love and support. And only later in life did I realize that I needed her love and support too. Isn't that the basis of Christian community? Of really what contentment and thankfulness is all about? And some of us find it sooner than others. But today we thank God for the community of faith that binds our hearts together in Christian love. For isn't that the source of true contentment? Isn't that really what we need when we are seeking to be a thankful people? God, we thank you for this community that binds our hearts together in Christian love. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. So it's only fitting that we end our service today with that song, Blessed Be the Tie That Binds, Our Hearts in Christian Love.
If today you wish to join this church, we want to invite you to come forward. And if today you want to start uh, that idea of growing in Christian community, bring a friend up here and pray at the altar. Maybe start with your spouse. I invite you to come as we stand and sing our final hymn. Number 557, it is one, two, and four. We will sing and just let me say that in the few months that I was gone, I realized how important this community was and how happy I am to be back with this community. Amen. 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 sisters in Christ, and as Jackie said, some days we do pretty good at that. <laughs> some days we get it all mixed up. But the thing that matters most is that we discover what that tie that binds. May you lift up that tie every day and tie it together those whom God has placed before you to love, that you might know what it means to be a blessing, and that you might know what it means to have your life blessed, now and forever. Amen.